you can't tell, I'm easily bored. Uh, I don't know how to live up to that, especially after these, the talks that we've had so far. Uh, we've heard about values. We've heard about how we value our rebellion, how we value our Camino, something I want to desperately do, and now after listening to you, I want to do it again. How we value our, our futures and our speculative futures in our world. Uh, I'm going to go a slightly different uh, direction here and talk about Sisyphus and, and the lessons of physics. And I'm going to start and with sort of a weird place. Some of you may know that I love sports, I love athletics, and being from Minnesota, I'm required by union contract to start with, that, with ice hockey. Uh, here's a picture from 1986, uh, and I'm going to concentrate really on this person right here. Uh, if you take a little bit closer look, you probably don't know, don't know who he is yet. There's a, a picture of him a little bit better. Anybody know who he is yet? It's that guy. <laughs> that guy became that guy who became that guy. <laughs> now, my son was watching this, and being a good 13-year-old, he said, Dad, how'd that guy become that guy? And of course, being a physicist, I had the hubris to say, well, maybe I got an idea. And it goes something like this. We start with the idea that physics, right? Physics, from the Greek word phusis, means nature, the study of nature, really goes back to the concept of natural philosophy. Not physics in the study of how balls move, but really in the concept of how do things happen and why do things happen. And so it's in that context of understanding how physics tells us the story of how things happen and why things happen, that I try and understand how that guy became that guy. Uh, now, to help you out, I'm going to give you a piece of advice. And for the center here, you have, you're going to have a job today. Okay? To understand a physics word or, or concept, all you do is you take the words, reverse them, and take them literally. Okay? So when I point out like this, everybody in the middle, I want you to say, turn it around. Ready? One, two, three. Oh, come on. That was weak. One more time. One, two, three. Okay, let's see if it works. First case, the horse had nebula. What do you do? Hey, really complicated. It's a nebula that looks like a horse's head. Let's try it again. The giant red spot on Jupiter. It's that spot on Jupiter that's giant and red. Right? You can fit like four or five Earths in it. Right there. Let's try one more time. Just make sure we got the concept right. Quantum mechanics. It's the mechanics. It's how you build up things. And instead of being continuous, our quantizer come in individual little bits. OK, so you passed your quiz. Turn it around, people. You're going to have a pop quiz later. I just want to warn you about that. Now, how does that apply here? Well, there are two lessons in physics that I'm going to point to. And like I said, I'm easily bored, so I brought a ball. Uh, and I've got this one here. And in fact, we'll use this one for the fun of it. Uh, let's try this ball. If I were to sit here and I'd say, ball, come, it doesn't come. If I say, ball, go over there, it doesn't go over there. What we have to do, you all know this, right? You knew when you were three years old, I don't want my ball sitting here. I want it there. And what do you have to do? You have to move it. And so we learn in physics classes, an object at rest tends to stay at rest, and an object in motion tends to stay in motion unless acted upon by an outside force. OK, let's translate that into human. Nothing happens on its own. Nothing changes on its own. You need to make it happen. Lesson number one of physics. Lesson number two. We go to the small ball. I can hold it up. You've all done this before. You play tennis. You do something else. You hold it up. You let it go. Oh my gosh, it bounces. What a shock. And if I let it bounce and bounce and bounce, it never comes back up to the same height. What I need to do if I want to make it go high is I need to actively put something into it. Keep the ball. And so that gets us to lesson number two. Energy in the universe is neither created nor destroyed. It is simply transformed from one form to another. OK, translated into human, you only get out as much as you put in. That ball bouncing will only come up to the height that I brought it or less. If I want more out of it, i got to put more into it. Physicists call that conservation of energy. We would call it the idea that you get out what you put in. And so these are the two lessons 
that we learn from physics. Things don't happen by themselves. You need to make them happen. And you only get out what you put in. Now, physicists, right, they've spent thousands of years doing this. They've done experiments with little balls and big balls and with electrons and all sorts of other stuff. And got into this broader lesson. Every time I take a ball and I bounce it, I never get out more than I put in. Every time I have a ball and I want it to move, I have to force it to move. And so for people who've been in my classes, you hear me talk about this idea that we take all these huge different numbers of things and we ruthlessly, ruthlessly reduce them down until we finally get a nugget of truth and we hold on to that like it's gold itself or even more precious than gold because it's something that we can use. When Dr. Kennedy was talking about the research I do, right, we can talk about a gas that's collapsing due to gravity and forming stars. It's just bunches of little balls. And something just makes them move. We call it gravity. And they move around and they hit each other. And eventually, they get close enough they can fuse and form a star. And life is good because we can have life around it, uh, at least if we believe Dr. DeRoy. But it's those truths that guide us in these complex systems. Because I know how balls always move. I know that I have to make things, push things to make them go. I have to push them to make them stop. I know that I can only get out as much as I put in. And so when I look at a complex system, I can say, well, if I know these things are true, then at least I know where to start. And it's that broader question that I say can guide us. But, oh, geez, that's good. OK. Let's turn around. Let's make that a human version. Let's start from the truths and way back or work our way back to our lessons. The physics lessons here identify the fundamental truths. What are the things that you know are always true? What are the things that you know are always true? Now, the advantage here to being at a liberal arts college to not having to be at MIT is I don't have to necessarily talk about objective truths. We can talk about subjective truths, those things that are true for you as you find them on the Camino, that are true for you as you find them as you go back home and discover your identity. Those truths that are true for you are those guides that give you a sense of how do you, how do you struggle with a complex situation. And then apply the two lessons. How do you make things happen? You need to do it. And then how do you work with that? You get out what you put in. So let's apply it. In general, I got a goal. My goal, spot guy, it's going to be hard for you here. My goal here is this rock. I want to get it from over here, like Sisyphus, to over there, <laughs> where it's not. Now, if I know that's my goal, if I know that's what I value, then i got two things I need to do. I need to identify my goal. It's not going that way. It's going over here. And so what does that mean? That means that every step along the way, all I ask is that I push the ball, and that generally, maybe, I get it closer to my goal each step along the way. Because eventually, if I'm really good, and in each moment, I make the decision that I want to go more that way then that way, the ball ends up where I want. Now, if you think that that really isn't a big deal, let me remind you, tell you the story of Alice and Bob. Alice and Bob, two pretend people. Alice and Bob make decisions. They make a decision every 10 seconds. Could be where to sit, whether or not they call their friend, whether they log into social media, do they raise their hand in class, it doesn't matter. They're questions, They're, they make decisions. Bob. Bob makes his decisions at random, 50-50. Yes, no, sit here, sit there, whatever. Alice knows just a little bit that she wants the rock to go that way, whatever it may be. And she makes her decisions 60-40. 60% of the time, she makes the right decision. 40% the wrong one. She's not perfect. Rock sometimes rolls backwards. One more thing, let's define a bad day as when you make 10 bad decisions in a row. Sat in the wrong spot, answered the wrong question, chose the wrong thing for lunch, didn't bring my credit card. That's four, so I'm like a bad day already. By the time you get to 10, let's call it a bad day. Bob, making a decision randomly, has a bad day every day. Alice, who just knows roughly the rock's going that way 60% of the time, has a bad day once every three years. A little bit of information in pushing the rock. So, how does it apply to this guy? 
I would bet you a dollar, and I wish you were here so I could ask him, I bet you a dollar that that guy in 1986 didn't wake up and say, I'm going to stop playing hockey and become the president of Denison University. But I bet you that every step along the way that he knew I was going that way. And every decision he made was, let's keep the rock going in the right, right direction. Let's get to that final point. I don't know where it is yet. It may be infinitely far away like Sisyphus's hill. But let's get the rock there. He kept pushing the rock in the right direction. So what's my conversation to you? The lessons of physics is applied to Sisyphus, the dude pushing the rock in eternity. Know your direction. Know your values. Know whether you want to go that way or that way. And every step along the way, just make sure the rock goes that way, knowing you need to push it, and you only get out as much as you put in. Thank you very much.